Northern Kenya, a vast wilderness and until recently a sanctuary for thousands of elephant. We'd come to meet Cookie Gulman, who owns this private wildlife reserve. She was surrounded by armed guards. She wanted to show us what was happening to the elephant herds on her land. We've been walking through thick bush, and there's the stench of rotting flesh. As the rangers led us down the path, they had their guns at the ready. In a wiki tattoo. Here in a clearing, the carcass of an elephant. Who's that? An the rangers told us that the elephant had been a young female of breeding age. What the rangers are telling me is that this elephant was killed for its tusks and that the poachers would have carried that ivory off to sell. Nearby, the rangers showed us the corpse of another elephant. Peter, wali piga na bunduki? Dio wali piga na bunduki wa AK-47. The head ranger, Peter, said poachers were well armed with automatic weapons. Many illegal guns have come in from neighboring war-torn Somalia. They just sprayed this animal from its front all the way to the back. You can see it's just riddled with bullet holes. They then moved in as soon as the body had fallen. They used an ax to hack away the trunk that would give them better access to get in at the tusk. And then they've run off into the bush. As Cookie took me to see yet another dead elephant, she told me she's been beaten, shot at, and had her life threatened by armed poachers. She now has 150 rangers. How many elephant have you lost here recently? In the year 2007, we lost six elephants. In the year 2008, we lost 28 elephants. And in the year 2009, we lost 57 elephants. 57 elephant poached last year, and that's just in one small corner of Kenya. They have a K-47 Kalashnikov, and they will spray a herd of elephants with bullets indiscriminately. We found babies dead. We found uh, lactating mothers, pregnant mothers. It is the most difficult time that could ever be envisaged, and the elephants are at sheer threat of becoming extinct very quickly. Kenya's elephants have been recovering since a world ban on the trade in ivory 20 years ago. But in the last two years, those gains have been eroded. OK, it looks like we've found another one. <coughs> now, you need juicy, juicy too. So this one is even more recent. This must be around about a week old. It's been... Uh, Picked at by scavengers, jackals, hyenas, that sort of thing. You can still see the hide is intact. There's flies everywhere. The stink is atrocious. And you can see once again the telltale signs <coughs> that the poachers have been here. Again, the tusks have been hacked out. If this was a natural death, then they would find the tusks still here. There are an estimated 200,000 illegal rifles in Kenya. Many are in the hands of feuding tribes, and we heard that poaching was making the situation worse. We drove to a village of the Samburu people. For years, the Samburu have feuded with the Pokot tribe over grazing and land. We met Jeremiah Lemaruni, a local councillor, and a mother, Panina Lekadar. Jeremiah showed us what was by now a familiar sight, another elephant carcass. But he had a disturbing story to explain its death. Uh, that's a shocking thing. Uh, this is uh, an elephant which was poached by uh, the Pokots on their way to attack the Samburus. They could take the tusks, they go and sell, and then they get money to buy more guns. So uh, they, they continue arming more and more warriors. So it's, it's complete a circle. Two hundred meters away, he showed us a mound of freshly dug soil. What happened here? 
Yeah, this is a this is a mass grave where by uh, we we buried young Samburu children and women, and this was as, as a result of an attack after the Pakots uh, came in. You see, it's one of the of the worst uh, attacks we have ever had in this area. Panina, you were here that day. What happened here? Panina told us she was in the camp on the day of the raid. Three of her children were killed. She herself was wounded in the leg. She says that this whole field was scattered with dead bodies. And by the end of the day, there were 62 dead people. Poachers are making enough money from selling tusks to buy modern guns. And this is leading to new levels of ethnic bloodshed. We drove to Nairobi, Kenya's capital city. We're on our way to the Kenya Wildlife Service that controls conservation in Kenya. I want to get a sense of the scale of elephant poaching in East Africa. Here, the Wildlife Service invited us to see the ivory they've seized in raids and confiscations. As they escorted us to a heavily guarded underground floor, we heard there was an ivory hall here worth tens of millions of dollars. Normally, the Wildlife Service will not allow cameras in here. This is a subterranean passage going into a high security strongroom. Wow. What an unbelievable sight. This is a mountain of ivory. Kenya hopes that by removing these tusks seized from poachers from the market, global demand for ivory can be killed off. But on the new black market, ivory is fetching higher prices than ever before. The tusks spilled over into several strong rooms. Incredible. He showed me ivory that had been seized at Nairobi's international airport. As uh, these big ones, they all as they are, they were in such open suitcase. Who were the people smuggling it? Uh, the Chinese. They were Chinese nationals. Yes. And do the Chinese represent many of the smugglers? Uh, those people who have a lot of demand for this is basically Chinese and Japan. It's a shocking feeling to be here. These are the tusks of thousands of elephant and it's about 65 to 70 tons. Most of Africa's ivory is smuggled to the Far East, particularly China, where a big market exists for carved ivory items such as trinkets, seals, and chopsticks. Elephants move freely across borders. What we had witnessed in Kenya was alarming, we wanted to investigate what was happening across the frontier in neighboring Tanzania, where we'd heard poaching is rampant. Tanzania's government claims to have a well-managed elephant population. We drove to the edge of the Salu Game Reserve, where government figures say around 40,000 elephant live. We'd heard that one village had become the center of poaching in the reserve. We're in the village of Amloka, hoping to talk to an informer who helps the authorities catch poachers. We can't show his face in the interview because he recently had his house burned down by poachers. The man said most of the elephant poaching in Sulu was carried out by villagers from here. He says that this village is the base of operations for poaching inside the Sulu game reserve. Buyers come down from Dar es Salaam and organize expeditions of poachers involving up to 30 men with guns. He said the big buyers in the capital city Dar es Salaam were from China and other Far Eastern countries. And they send their Tanzanian agents down here at night to buy ivory in lots of two or three hundred kilos at a time.
We wanted to meet the traders who buy from the poachers. We followed the smugglers' route to the port city of Dar es Salaam. Trading in ivory in Tanzania is highly illegal, but local contacts tracked down some dealers. At first, they seemed nervous. We've organized a meeting with a man who says he's an ivory trader, and using secret filming, we're going to try to negotiate for ivory that he wants to sell us. We arranged to meet in a public cafe. It became apparent he wasn't carrying any ivory. He wanted to see if we looked like serious customers. Yes, sir. No. Oh, but I want to know better how many kilo you want, man. How many have you got? So, I don't know how many kilo. I have that half the, half the kilo, maybe 50 kilo, 200 kilo. It depends how many kilo you want. These quantities of ivory would account for dozens of butchered elephant. Well, I mean, I think to begin with, can we see a sample of what you have? So when today or when? Well, just now. We're here. Before you do that, what is what is the price per kilo? I think it's 100, 100, 120 for one kilo. Dollars? Yeah, I think so, for one kilo. Thinking we were serious buyers, the trader phoned his partner. It turned out he was nearby, maybe even watching us. They want to show you the sample in the car. In the car? Yeah. In the car? Because they are not, not good to hear. And then if you want to see if you agree, yeah. then I bring more. OK. We arranged to collect the ivory dealer and his partner in our vehicle a few minutes later. We're at a petrol station just opposite Mwenge Market where the ivory trader says that he's going to uh, emerge to bring us some samples. Yeah, okay. They're saying that we have to be moving. Yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, yeah. The dealers were breaking the law, but we have hidden their identities in case of reprisals by their crime bosses. As soon as they were in the car, they produced an elephant's tusk. Okay. So what's that? That's how many kilos is that? This one? Yeah. This is a uh, like a two. That's like two kilos. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. All right. Have you had it? Have you got any more? No, no, no. Many. 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 Right. Oh, it's 30 kilos, it's okay. Yeah? That's 100. Okay. So, no, no, why not? I want to, I want to know the, how many kilos. How many kilos? Well, I tell you what, we'll contact you about, about, uh, about this, yeah. okay? Yeah, we'll just, we'll just talk okay. to you a bit later. Okay. Right. Okay. We left without putting in an order in case it led to elephants being killed. Okay, so that is conclusive proof that uh, there is ivory being traded very openly in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. We've been offered uh, as much ivory as we want. Tanzania admits to a poaching problem, but claims to be serious about enforcing the law. But here, we were apparently being offered big quantities of illegal ivory. We drove back to the Salu Reserve, Tanzania is among the world's poorest countries. Wildlife tourism is its biggest industry. Yet here again, we were shown poached elephant carcasses. Most people were too scared to talk about the true scale of poaching for fear of their lives. But one safari operator who brings tourists to the slough agreed to speak. He doesn't want his identity revealed on camera because he says he's received death threats. I asked him what he had seen in the Salu and who he thought was involved. I can hardly say what I've seen. And what I've seen is, uh, is many, many carcasses over the last two and a half years, uh, and the carcasses are building up. I think the Wildlife Department knows exactly what's going on here, and if they're not doing it, they're sanctioning it. I definitely think that there are some members of the Game Department who are poaching to supplement their pay uh, and feed their families. Who are they selling their commodity to? There are definitely buyers from China, Far East, coming here to, uh, to take ivory. Are they protected? I guess you couldn't do it and feel that you, were, you could take something out of a country 
unless you're in a position to do so. Do you think that senior officials are involved in a cover-up? I don't think you can take this much ivory out of a park like this without some very well-placed people, um, you know, running block for you. The processing of it has to be done by people who have the authority. So people in the know know. It's going to go through um, at least 15 to 20 police manned roadblocks and you couldn't have that much contraband travelling on that road without certain people's knowing. We wanted to find out whether these allegations of official corruption were true. We returned to Dar es Salaam and made contact again with the ivory dealers. We've just had a call from the illegal ivory traders. We appear to be gaining their trust because they've invited us to a secret location where they say they have a lot more ivory to show us. Now we're going to film this meeting covertly again. Hi, how are you? Yeah, fine, how are you? How is the fun? Yeah, yeah, good. How are you? Okay. All we've got to do is work out uh, you know, how this stuff can be moved. Do you know who to talk to? Yeah. yeah. He claimed he had corrupt government officials in his pocket. You know who to talk to here? Yes, I know who to talk to here. you got some friends here who yes. can organise it? Yes, so my friend is here, basically, the airport. He's your airport security? Yes, airport security. The men who check the things when it's done. So I think no. that's a promise money. Yeah. You have money. Yes, we got to win. Yeah, one yeah. yeah. way. He suggested that government officials could be bribed to smuggle out ivory. They then led us into a house where they said larger quantities of ivory were secretly stored for us to see. Inside, they produced ivory carvings and raw tusks. In all, about 30 kilos, worth about $30,000 in China. And they said this was just a sample. These are worked pieces, aren't they? Yeah, this is for also ivory kind, but they're already making. You know, people from China. You see scars here. You sell those all the time? Yes. Yeah. So that's people from China. Many yeah. people from China come. Yeah. Yeah. They wanted us to make a purchase, but we said we needed to think about it. So look, we'll be in touch. We agreed to drive the dealers back to the spot where we had met them, and in the car they revealed the identity of their biggest customer. Because they're Chinese VIP, they are doing for themselves. They do it themselves? Yes, yes. How is he a VIP? Is it a diplomat or...? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's at the embassy? Yes, that's the uh, government. No, government. Chinese he's government? Chinese, yes. Right, diplomat. Yes. So he's based here? Yeah, yeah. OK, but he's OK because he's got diplomatic bag. Nobody checks his yes, bag. Yes, nobody checks. You know, also when uh, President in China mm. or Wuzhou Town, mm. he was coming to Tanzania, remember? Mm -hmm. So he comes to take many things here. Okay. Yeah, like uh, 200 kilos. Is he a diplomat with the Chinese president? Yes, Wuzhou Town. Wuzhou Town? Town? Yes. When Wuzhou Town visited here, they went away with a lot of ivory. Yeah. No. So one time you sold how much? 200 kilos? 200 kilos, yes. In one time? That's one right time. There's no suggestion the Chinese president knew of this. Next, the dealers made us an astonishing offer. How many kilos could you get? You want. Even if you say 1,000 kilos, is that true? You can get 1,000 yes, kilos of ivory. It's not mine, but I have them. The ton of ivory offered to us was worth a million dollars on the Far East black market. We immediately broke contact with the dealers after this. Scores of elephant would have been slaughtered to fill orders of the size they offered. Wildlife experts say most ivory seizures from East Africa are China-bound. However, the Chinese government told us they're against the illegal ivory trade and denied allegations that Chinese diplomats illegally purchased and exported ivory by misusing diplomatic immunity in 2009. After weeks of applications, we were finally invited to interview Tanzania's Wildlife Division. We wanted to ask officials about the allegations against them. We were told we could see the acting director of wildlife, Obedi Mbangwa. Mr Mbangwa, can we ask you some questions about uh, 
elephant conservation in Tanzania? No, I'm sorry, I cannot say anything unless I get the authority from the permanent secretary. Yesterday, we were, we were advised by uh, another one of your colleagues that we had completed all of the requirements, all of the requests. So what she said is not what she meant, I think. Well, what she said is not what she meant. Yeah, because what she meant... Mr Mbangwa refused to comment on the allegations. Tanzania's government told us it constantly combats the illegal ivory trade, that it conducts anti-poaching operations in the Sulu Reserve, and that state enforcement personnel regularly detect and stop illegal dealings in wildlife specimens. But the killing continues. We return to Kenya. Many poor Kenyans are beginning to realize wildlife tourism offers far greater wealth than livestock or farming. But the unprecedented killing of elephants means this opportunity risks being snatched from them. In this community wildlife reserve of Namunyak, people protect elephants because tourism provides the only route out of poverty. The people here are still very poor, but tourism revenue is now paying for the education of their children. We've been invited into the uh, Manyata, the home of uh, a Samburu family. This community once stood by as elephants were poached. But village elder Aserta explained that in recent years they've realized the benefits of protecting them with their own guards. He's happy that they're still here for visitors to come and see. He says that he derives an income from tourism, so he wants the elephants to survive here. A surter explained that the presence of elephants in the area proved it was secure. If you don't have elephants in the area, it's because they've run away, because there are guns, there are bandits, there are rustlers and poachers. Nearby, we saw the proof of what a surter had told us. The elephants here were not terrified of people as they had been elsewhere. The revival of poaching to feed China's appetite for ivory is threatening not only the elephants of East Africa, but the security and economic gains of its people. To find out more about elephant poaching or any of the other issues reported in Unreported World, visit our website at channel4.com slash unreportedworld. Thanks for watching this classic Unreported World episode. Click the logo to subscribe for more award-winning documentaries from the Unreported World team. We upload videos every Wednesday and Sunday, keeping you up to date with content from all over the world.